Thank you so much, uh, Xiaoming. Um, and of course, I want to thank uh, China How for their continuous support to uh, help promote and, of course, uh, make the opportunities of China available to, um, to the world. Given the current uh, situation with the pandemic, et cetera, and uh, we all know that a lot of business have um, suffered from, uh, from loss of business for many months. Um, but, uh, but China is, uh, has bounced back from a lot of uh, the issues that are still being faced by many countries overseas uh, outside of China. And today it's really our role, or at least that's how I, that's how I want to see it. It's my role to really um, expose the opportunities that are still available with the Chinese market with partners like China Hao and the help from Xiaoming and Kostya and, uh, and the China Hao team. So thank you again for your continued support. So um, very briefly, so my name is Dean. Um, I am a French citizen. I have been living in China for a little over 13 years. Um, I originally started in private banking uh, when I first got to China, then I moved to working in the advertising and digital consulting industry, and right now uh, in e-commerce. So I have joined Alibaba in September 2016. Um, I originally started with um, a very, very interesting project that Alibaba and had at the time in 2016, which was, which was started by Jack Ma. Um, this program was uh, called Alibaba Global Leadership Academy, which was essentially a management training program to train um, uh, overseas uh, talents to come to the headquarters and learn about the company's culture and help the company globalize uh, moving forward. Because globalization is a very strong uh, strategy for Alibaba Group and is, of course, a very key component to uh, to the success of uh, many SMEs and many uh, leading companies and brands uh, that want to reach China. So I've joined Tmall Global in December 2017. Um, and after joining Tmall Global, actually, I've actually taken care of the French uh, development of the French market, which means um, identifying opportunities for French brands to enter into China via uh, Tmall Global, but also via different platforms like Tmall, uh, but also Alibaba Cloud, Alipay, uh, Tainiao, etc. So I'll go into details of what these companies are later on. And um, I have taken in the role uh, since then to, uh, to really, really focus on TKOF, so the business that we're going to talk about today, Tmall and Kala, Tmall Global and Kala Overseas Fulfillment Solution, while helping many SMEs and large companies to enter China. My major focus is on the pet industry. So I help to develop the pet category in China. I've recently also taken the role to developing um, uh, the categories of golf and skiing. So these are two upcoming categories in in China because the government has put a very strong mandate for all outdoor sports um, and golf and skiing are two major categories of focus. So if there are any suppliers um, in this webinar who have the possibility to supply uh, golf and skiing products on a very high uh, quantity, I would be interested to talk to you. But today, the main topic of the webinar is really for me to introduce you to the Tmall Global and Kala Overseas Fulfillment Solution. So without further ado, I will um, start with sharing my screen. So I will start with the presentation. Um, so I've given a very brief introduction to who I am. Um, and I will now move on to give you a brief introduction of Alibaba Group itself and uh, Tmall Global. So Alibaba Group is a company that was started in September 2000, uh, sorry, September uh, 1999 by Jack Ma and uh, 18 other founders. Um, they have grown to uh, create what we call uh, China's main e-commerce platform um, that has developed into this behemoth that comprises of many different types of business segments that includes payment solutions, logistic solutions, as well as advertising solutions and different marketplaces. Uh, those marketplaces are what we call 
uh, e-commerce marketplaces that will help um, companies and brands to sell their products to the Chinese consumers, but on different business models, whether on B2B or B2C. So I will now dive into more Tmall Global and the Kaola Overseas uh, Fulfillment Solution. So the outline of today's webinar is as such. So I will basically um, focus on three main parts. I will introduce you to the model of TKOF. So I repeat again, Tmall Global and Kaola Overseas F uh, Fulfillment Solution. So this is TKOF. So I will introduce you to what it is. I will give you some insights and trends about the business models and how to join us. First part, TKOF. So TKOF is part of Tmall Global. So Tmall Global today is actually um, China's largest cross-border B2C e-commerce marketplace. What does that mean exactly? That means that Tmall Global today is basically a company that um, really focuses on helping brands and suppliers to sell their products to the Chinese market without having a physical presence in China. The types of solutions that we use in order to, um, to achieve such business is that we have a customer facing marketplace where the Chinese consumers will basically either go on their application, mobile application of Timo Global, or they will simply go to their laptops and they will basically start browsing in Tmall Global for various brands that have opened their flagship stores or for various marketplaces inside of Tmall Global that have opened their own marketplace in Tmall Global in order to shop for the various products. So we really cater to, I would say, different types of businesses um, and supply chain, whether it's from the brand directly or it's from suppliers directly or from, it's from marketplaces within the marketplace. And we help all of those business models or all of those businesses and brands to sell to the Chinese consumers. So today, if you look at those numbers that, I, uh, that I've shared on this page, China is the largest retail market in the world today. It has an estimated value of roughly 5 trillion US dollars as of 2020. And in terms of trade, China is placing a very, very big priority on domestic consumption. So this is very important to remember because domestic consumption was not so much of a priority mandate until 2016, um, because the Chinese market was more about export from the Chinese factories to the world. But China has put several uh, regulations and several policies in place in order to boost domestic, domestic consumption, consumptions. So if we look at what changes have happened since then, China is, ex is expected to import more than 84 billion US dollar of products and services by 2022. And with close to 25% of online penetration, there are really a lot of opportunities in China. So I just looked at the most recent data Today in China, there's more than 1 billion people who are connected to the internet, more than 1 billion people. That means that all of those people today are able to shop for various products um, that they will want to uh, purchase from uh, local companies in China, but also from overseas. So Tmall Global today is very well positioned to help brands and suppliers to sell to more than 750 million consumers that shop on Alibaba's retail marketplaces on a monthly basis. And this marketplace, actually Tmall Global, was launched in 2014. And it was launched after a very strong answer from the government to actually um, regulate the industry of what we call the Daigo. Daigo is a Chinese term that means that back in around 2010, between 2010 and 2013, a lot of Chinese individuals went overseas to buy products, but they were buying quite a lot of products. And they decided to use those products that they bought to then sell them back to families and friends in China, creating this new Daigo channel. And because 
it wasn't a very good solution to guarantee a very positive and very good customer experience, the Chinese government decided to step in and really help to put policies in place that will help um, the, um, the the Chinese consumers to have a positive market uh, to have a positive um, a consumer experience, um, not only on the tax level but also on customer um, service level, etc. So Tmall Global was launched at that time when the government really decided that this was going to be an industry. Cross border commerce was going to be an industry that will really help to boost boost the Chinese domestic consumption. So today, Tmall Global is now helping all the top 500 uh, fortune companies to build a direct to consumer channel, either, either via a flagship store model or via the direct purchase model, or by working with a business model like TKOF. So in terms of the value proposition, what is TKOF really offering to brands and suppliers like you who are online today, or to any others who didn't have the chance to participate in this webinar. So Tmall Global and Kala Overseas Fulfillment is a self-operated store by Tmall Global and Kala. What does that mean? So earlier in my presentation, I mentioned to you that um, Tmall Global caters to brands, suppliers, but also to marketplaces within the marketplace. And TKOF is a marketplace within Tmall Global's marketplace. So in this, um, in this, what I'm trying to say is basically that we have our own operations team internally at Tima Global that runs the store of TKOF. And so that means that when you think about entering China, you as an SME, you will actually think about maybe hiring people internally to take care of you know, selling the products, business development team, sales team, operations team, logistics team, warehouse teams, et cetera. Well, all of this is crapped off the table because we take care of all of this. So what we do is that we offer overseas brand and suppliers a really good opportunity to target the growing Chinese middle-class consumer base and test, test the market within our marketplace. So for this, what we've done is that we have uh, placed different warehouses overseas um, and i will show you where they are later on and we offer very good inventory and payment flexibility to all the suppliers that are on board on tkof at very very advantageous uh, logistics and storage costs so these are the four types of business solutions that xiaoming mentioned earlier so the first one i will start on the left hand side you have direct purchasing. So direct purchasing, I've put the definition in there. It means that the suppliers enter into a B2B collaboration with TKOF and sells their SKU using the wholesale price model or what we call the B2B price. So the payment terms that we've put on that, on that solution are that the supplier will get paid 30 days after the products are listed on shelf. Now, who is this business model suitable for? It's suitable for suppliers that have popular brands and SKUs that are already selling in China, or those that have a very, very strong trend, positive trend in the local market and in China. So unfortunately, this is not a, I know this is probably the most favorite business model that a lot of people will want to go for because it offers a model where we are the distributor of the supplier or the brand. But those SKUs that we will focus on are those that are already popular with the Chinese consumers within China. So that's why I've put that the stock ownership is actually by Alibaba. In terms of the pricing requirement, we require competitive wholesale price. There are no costs for onboarding and marketing, we sometimes ask suppliers and brands to put in certain discounts that we will use at, as marketing fees to market the products within our marketplace. So this is about direct purchasing where TKOF becomes the distributor of the supplier and the brands. The second solution is called GFC consignment. So GFC consignment 
what does it mean exactly? It means that the supplier sends their SKUs to a designated warehouse and receives the payment after the customer has paid for his or her order on TKOF. So this is more of a question of timing. So you will send your SKUs to, for example, a warehouse in Germany that is run and managed by one of our company called Zainyao. And from there, the products will then be listed on shelf, but they will also be listed on Timor Global and Kala Overseas Fulfillment Marketplace. The Chinese consumer places an order and then you will receive the cash, okay? So who is this suitable for? So this one is also su suitable for suppliers with popular brands and SKUs that are already selling in China. But this one, actually, we offer the suppliers and brands the opportunity to offer um, SKUs that they think will be um, uh, will have some kind of strong potential in the Chinese market. And we will then help the suppliers to then sell those products into the TKOF marketplace. So the stock ownership here compared to direct purchasing, it's still owned by the supplier until a sale is made. So in terms of costs, there is no deposit cost. There is a monthly fee, which we call a monthly technical fee of roughly 50 US dollars per month, but it's free for the, for the first year. In terms of storage cost, there are storage costs, um, but we, in the contract, we've put that it's free for the first three months, once the supplier has put the first product on shelf. And after three months, the cost becomes 0.71 euros per day per cubic meter. So this one is important because actually, why did we put that um, free storage space in the first three months? Is because we know that this business model is suitable for SKUs that might not be very, very popular in China yet. So there is a dimension of risk that we put in there that is taken by the supplier and so it's a good phase to actually start for the first three months to see whether those products are selling or not. In case they are not selling, then the products can be returned and you don't need to pay for the actual storage cost. In terms of marketing, um, we ask, same as in uh, direct purchasing, we ask sometimes for additional investment for marketing activities um, because this one again, um, some suppliers might have some very good SKUs that have a strong potential, but they still need to be marketed. And we still ask for some kind of discount or some kind of marketing investment by the supplier. So in terms of logistics, this is very important. Here I've put that the supplier is responsible for transportation costs to a designated Sanya warehouse. After the first, after the three months free storage period, the supplier will be responsible for the logistics cost from the Tsanya warehouse to their designated warehouse. So these two first business models I've introduced are um, extremely important because one is addressing the SKUs that have a very, very strong popularity in China. The other one is addressing, addressing the SKUs that have a very strong potential in China. And you can see the difference is basically on the monthly, um, on the monthly technical fee and the logistics cost, okay? The third and fourth solutions, which I called API and VMS. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. So this one is, um, the definition of an API is basically a, a system integration through um, IT processes that will connect the warehouse of the supplier to Timor Global's marketplace. So technically speaking, we can say that through API and VMS models, so these are two models that are very similar. I'll show you the difference later. Through this business model, the supplier will be able to make their inventory in their warehouse available to the Chinese consumer directly without having to shipping their SKUs to a designated warehouse before the Chinese consumer is making a purchase. So I will go through the list of definitions and different terms about API and VMS. So the definition is that the supplier integrates their inventory data from their organization's backend into our own TKOF application. 
it's suitable for suppliers that have strong IT capabilities and that are able to provide pick and pack solution. So remember what I said earlier, I said that through this business model, the supplier will be able to ship their products directly to a warehouse after the Chinese consumer has made a purchase. Therefore, the supplier will be given all kinds of um, um, accessories and tools in order to do the pack, the packing of the products with the Tmall Global uh, logos and packaging. So the suppliers need to have this kind of capability internally. The payment terms are the same. It's after a TQF consumer has paid. And this is basically what we call web to web or drop shipping model. Okay. The stock is still owned by the supplier. There are several requirements that I've put in there, but those requirements are not hard requirements. Therefore, um, they are for what we have observed as being a good API supplier. So a good API supplier, most of the time, has very large turnover of over 10 million US dollars a year and has a minimum, for example, of 5,000 SPUs in their inventory. They have pick and pack capability. The SKU's uh, validity, validity period must be two third and the shipping to Tsanya warehouse must be done within 48 hours in order to guarantee a good consumer experience. There are some costs with this one, which is that the deposit is of 10,000 uh, US dollar and the monthly fee with our te a technological partner called VIO, um, which is a technical fee of uh, US, USD $300 uh, per month, but free for the first year. Now, the, diff the difference between API and VMS. So API is for suppliers that have, again, strong inventory and a good IT capability. But VMS is for those same suppliers that have strong inventory, but no IT capability. So those who have no IT capability, they will be able to rent a um, what we call a um, template IT system that we have made through VO, our technological partner. And they will be able to use that in order to integrate their inventory directly into the marketplace. So these are the two differences between API and VMS. Okay. So those business models are very important because they are basically, they have been launched after we have observed what kind of business models, uh, apart from the flagship store uh, solution, would be actually the most suitable to any suppliers that want to enter China, given their uh, IT capability, their storage capability, their uh, inventory capability, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, I will introduce to you a little bit more about our logistics network in Europe and Asia as of last June. So we have uh, logistics warehouses in Germany, France, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, and Hong Kong. So as you can see, each of these um, uh, warehouses have different capability or support different capabilities. The GFC consignment, for example, is supported by our Germany and our Hong Kong warehouse, but every single warehouses support the API solution. And a lot of them support as well C2C model capability and dangerous, dangerous good storage capability. So I will go into the definition of C2C model capability. I've put it down there in the definition section. So it refers to warehouse that can store OTC products as well as luxury goods that exceeds the retail value of 5,000 RMB. So as you all know, there will be luxury goods that will be worth, for example, a thousand something US dollars or 2000 euros, for example, Chanel bags, et cetera. And some of our warehouses, like in Germany, France, and Hong Kong, support the actual storage of such goods. The dangerous goods refer to warehouses that can store products such as perfume and alcoholic beverages. Because in, in China, if we look at the Chinese um, uh, trade uh, administration, they categorize dangerous good as being a, um, a category that has, or that includes perfume and alcoholic, alcoholic bever uh, beverages, okay? Now I'll share with you a little bit more insights 
and trends about TKOF. So the first page is really to show you uh, the team structure at TKOF. So in TKOF, we have four regions that we manage internally. The first one is Europe, the second one is the US, then Japan, and then Korea. So each of these regions are what we call teams. So I am in the European team of TKOF. And you can see here what I've put are basically some um, uh, results about the uh, growth of each businesses of each region. And as you can see, Europe was started in June 2019. And we've had so far a growth of more than 1,900% um, in terms of onboarding supplier, but also in terms of the turnover generated by the suppliers within TKOF. So for us in Europe, it's very, very important to remember that actually um, many of the European brands that are in TKOF today are actually what we call the big brands and some small brands. But Europe is composed of roughly 44 countries. And right now we have mainly brands and suppliers from the Western countries. We're still hoping that more countries will join TKOF, more European countries will join TKOF, and more European brands and suppliers will join TKOF as well. Because despite the fact that these are fast growing business models, we still need the help from partners like China How, for example, to expand the awareness of such business model to European suppliers and European brands in order to get them to get back to business thanks to the Chinese economy. Now, I will show you a little bit more um, insights that, I've, that I have separated in three parts. So from the left side, I will start. I will show you some insights from top performing categories. So the very, very top performing categories today in TKOF are beauty and personal care and fashion. The types of products that sell really well in beauty and personal care are basically uh, products from large and famous brands that range from a price between 200 to 3000 RMB uh, retail price. So you can see here, you have a cream from Lancome, you have other products as well from, uh, I can't remember, oh, it's Balmont, and other products as well that range into the categories of personal care, such as facial care, or even skin care, et cetera, et cetera. In fashion, bags, shoes, and uh, luxury um, jewelry are really selling extremely well today in TKOF. The prices range between 1,000 RMB to 5,000 RMB, but they go above 5,000 RMB, which is the threshold that has been put in place by the Chinese government for every single individual purchase by Chinese consumers online in e-commerce platforms. So these are some category performance insights that I, have, that I have shared. Now, in terms of other up and coming categories, what we're looking for in TKOF, in beauty, we're looking for SKUs from large and famous brands. In fashion, we're looking for sneakers and casual shoes from top selling brands. We're also looking for jewelry bags, for luxury bags, jewelry and accessories from top brands, as well as outlet and clearance products from any brand. In the mother and baby category, we're looking for Lego special units, kids wear, maternity supplements, and school accessories. In pets, which is the category that I look, um, that I'm in charge of uh, in overall Team Global, we're looking for dogs and cats, staple food, snacks and treats, care and supplement products. In food, we look for liquor, wine from top brands, um, to give you an example, I'm, I've just onboarded a major wine trading company from France that is onboarding into the API business model that will sell major top French brands into TKOF. In 3C, so that's consumer electronics, we're looking from everything ranging to from beauty and body equipment, kitchen appliances, personal healthcare equipment, speakers and headphones, in home. We're looking for handmade and cultural products, cooking utensils and home decoration. Personal care, we're looking for same as beauty, 
uh, SKUs from large and famous brands. And then in health, we're looking for OTC, functional foods, and adult products. So a little parenthesis here on adult products. Adult products is actually a subcategory of health that has been booming in the past few years um, uh, in China. And um, major companies that sell adult products uh, have been overperforming on both Tmall Global flagship store solution, but also on TKOF. So if you've got some very interesting adult products brands under your portfolio, or if you are a supplier that supplies adult products brands, or maybe you are a brand of adult products, then you're more than welcome. Now, in terms of the last part, which is the focus business models. So we say that we focus more on API or VMS suppliers. Why do we say so? Because we focus on those um, that have the capability to support the um, um, uh, Chinese consumers' demands. Because we have in Alibaba, we have major marketing campaigns throughout the year, such as Double Eleven, which is called Singles Day. So I don't know if everyone knows about this um, marketing campaign that takes place every November 11th of every year. But this marketing campaign is uh, a major, major shopping festival that is much bigger than any of our competitors' um, shopping festivals. And so we need suppliers that have the capacity, a very strong capacity for uh, supply of inventory into China at any given time. Now, I'll give you two major case studies that are from two suppliers. Unfortunately, I cannot give you the name of the suppliers, but I will give you insights of what has made both of them very successful on TKOF. So both of them are actually API suppliers. So this first one started its cooperation with us in July, 2019. And they saw their order amount on TKOF grow by almost 500% on last year's W11. So if we look at who they are, they're an international wholesaler and distributor that onboarded last July, 2019. It's a company that was founded in 1970 in the Netherlands that generate a little over 2 billion euros um, in 2019. They have over 100,000 SKU, 100, SKUs under management, and they today represent the interest of more than 3,000 beauty and liquor brands. So here you have the, long, the, the different list of brands that they work with or they distribute across the world. And they've launched more than 7,000 SKUs on TKOF um, for the beauty side. And on the liquor side, they uh, launched more than 2,500 SKUs in the platform. So the result, which I've mentioned already earlier, is a growth um, of almost 500% on W11 versus our 2008, 2020 June 18 mid-year shopping festival, which is happening very soon again in June 18 this year. So the CEO gave us a little uh, uh, quote about what makes that company so unique, is that they have a very highly advanced IT capability, most of their businesses are fully automated and their infrastructure is based on continuous innovation and keen investment with an implementation, um, implementation of stringent, efficient program, small IT solution and innovative logistics. So this is about the first supplier, what made them successful and what kind of result in terms of turnover growth they have seen uh, compared to those two dates I mentioned. The second supplier is a supplier that uh, is also onboarding on API model. They onboarded in September 2019, and they saw that for the same time period, the growth um, order amount grew by almost a thousand percent. So who are they? They're a luxury goods trader based in Hong Kong uh, that was founded in 2010 with offices in the US, Italy, Beijing, and Hong Kong. And they have 10 times as less SKUs as the previous supplier I showed you earlier, but they represent the interest of more than 100 luxury accessories, luggage, clothing, and shoe brands, such as Prada, Bulgari, Moulin, Swarovski, etc. And so what they did with us is actually that because they have such versatile team, 
um, in different countries and regions, they were able to connect with us and then really, really get on quickly with the operations of their products on our platform with TKOF by communicating with us daily. Now, how to join us? So I believe that Kostia has shared a bit.ly link earlier, um, which is a link to our uh, website that you will see uh, more information about the various business solutions, not only TKOF, but you will also see about Tmall Direct Import. You will also see about the flagship store solution, and you will have a video as well about what is Tmall Global, okay? So I will just finish with two slides here. The first slide is really the process behind uh, joining us via API and VMS models. So for API and VMS models, so I generally take care of the uh, onboarding of API and VMS suppliers when they contact me. So the first step is really to contact me, very simple, or to simply go to the link that was shared by Kostia in the uh, chat box, which will lead you to our merchant.tmall.hk channel. And from there, you will have a small button that says, join us. You click join us and you submit your information and then you will get in contact with either me or my colleagues. So this is the process of uh, moving into TKOF as an API or VMS uh, supplier. And these are uh, the different details about how to join in as a direct purchasing and GFC uh, supplier, okay? So um, this is it for the presentation. I hope I didn't take too much time, um, but uh, if uh, I believe if there are any questions from anyone, please uh, feel free to shoot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dean. It's uh, really helpful and insightful. Uh, before uh, um, the questions from our audience, uh, I would like to ask a question first. Can you show us some uh, uh, case studies and uh, also the, the uh, live page of TOF, TKOF, so that we can have, um, you know, really, you know, a, a straightforward understanding of the business? Okay, so for this, let me see if I can go actually on, um, on my here i will go to the marketplace to the actual marketplace so this is um the marketplace of tmall global okay so what you have here usually i would say consumers do not shop on their um i would say on their um computers anymore they really go to um to their uh, phone and application to directly do it. So here, what you have is you have different business models that I mentioned earlier. And the TKOF business model is right here. In Chinese, it's called Haiwai to go. So when you click on this button, you'll be able to see the entire TKOF page. So this is essentially what the Chinese consumers see when they go into uh, the TKOF uh, landing page on Tmall Global, okay? But when they open it on their, um, on their mobile, it's totally different. The um, visual is very different. So I will, for example, uh, go here um, to the personal care category. So this uh, is beauty and personal care category. So I'll click in this one. And here you will have the products that are listed on TKOF by subcategories of beauty and personal care. And in some cases by brands as well. Okay, so again, do not look too much at the, the laptop page because I would say more than 90% of the Chinese consumers that shop on Tima Global will go on their mobile phone to shop. But this is just to give you an idea about how it's hosted into Tima Global. Okay, uh, in terms of the, the case study Xiaoming you mentioned, um, unfortunately, I don't have more case studies to share but these two because these were what we call internally desensitized. Uh, they got approvals from the suppliers and the content itself was approved by our PR team and internal procurement, et cetera, et cetera. So for these two cases I shared, right? It's very important to, to, for anyone who's attending this webinar to really kind of look at number one, who those 
I mean, what kind of capability does um, those suppliers have? That's number one. What kind of SKUs these, part, these suppliers are able to provide? The size of these companies as well. And what kind of collaboration level there has been between their team and the TKOF team. So what I want to mention here is actually that, of course, some of those suppliers have internally a team of people who can speak Chinese. But we have very successful suppliers on TKOF today that have no clue of, uh, of Chinese. They don't speak Chinese at all, and they're doing extremely well on TKOF today. So the reason why I showed you these two cases is because I want you to get an idea about what makes a supplier successful based on their structure, on the SKUs they provide, and of course, what kind of business result there um, they can expect from onboarding on a business like TKOF. So here you see there are many very famous brands, uh, but we also welcome the smaller brands that have strong potential in China and that have, of course, a very strong, I would say, um, consumer base in their local country as well. So this is, um, I would say, you know, the the very strong brands on TKOF versus the local brands that have strong potential in their local country and in China. Okay, thank you. And we've got some questions from our club members and also from YouTube. So we'll start from club members here. So the first question are from Stefan. Uh, are the overseas warehouses bonded warehouses or do they follow country specific VIT regulations? That's a very good question. So um, we follow the country specific VAT regulation because in Europe, we're in the European Union. So we follow the German um, VAT regulation. We will follow uh, the same for, the, for France, for different countries we're developing, et cetera, the Netherlands. So we have a VAT um, a tax number and we also ask our suppliers to have a VAT tax number so that they can get the rebate. Uh, from the, the, the back end. Okay. Okay, nice. And next question is from Derek. And uh, for the VMS or API solutions, how long does the customer typically have to wait from placing order to receiving goods? How much quicker is the direct purchase model from the customer perspective? So that's another very good question because I mentioned earlier in my presentation that we uh, require that suppliers actually send the products from their warehouse to the designated, designated warehouse within 48 hours. The reason why is because we want to guarantee a very good consumer experience. And once the consumer places an order, we actually push ourselves to make sure that they receive the products within seven days. Sometime we're able to achieve five days from the time the consumer has placed an order to the time that the, the product is delivered to the consumer door. So the reason why we're so pushy on our platform, that means you know, pushing for 48 hours of delivery from the, custom, the, the supplier's warehouse to our warehouse is because we want to guarantee a very good and positive consumer experience. Okay, thank you. And now we're moving to uh, questions on YouTube. So one is, I wonder how Timo, like you partly covered this, but maybe you can give some extra details. Uh, I especially wonder how Timo Global Team operate branding and marketing for the products in TQF. Also wanna know, can client branded retailer join and control partially branding and marketing? So it's that's, a, that's another very good question because actually, um, so as I mentioned in, my, in the definition of TKOF, so TKOF is a self-operated store by Timo Global. What does that mean? That means that we have a, an operations team internally that will take care of the operations of putting the products in display into the TKOF marketplace, but that will also leverage Alibaba's ecosystem and other marketplaces in order to make sure that those products benefit from the resources of Alibaba Group. So we have other marketing platforms from, uh, for example, a, market platform called, a marketing platform called Juhas One 
um, which is the group buying, um, uh, I would say a group buying marketing tool, marketing engine by Alibaba. And so we will make sure to collaborate with the teams of Juhua Swan in order to make sure that those products also feature in the campaigns of Juhua Swan. So all of these works, all these operational work, all taking place, all taken care of by the team of Google, the TKOF, your operations team. In terms of branding, so this, we expect, of course, the suppliers to have a branding ready for the brands that they want to sell. Because we will not take care of you know, branding and visual identity, et cetera. We're a direct-to-consumer marketplace. That means that we take the products already marketable, and we will provide the marketplace for them to then be sold to our Chinese consumers. So the, the brand, the supplier, et cetera, need to have a brand, branded product with packaging ready, uh, with trademark um, uh, identified in the European Union or maybe in China, et cetera. But everything must be ready for the product to be sold directly to the Chinese consumer. Okay, thank you, Dean. And one more question. Uh, I understand TQF is for SMEs. Is there examination criteria for being supplier? What would be that? Is there any potential to be rejected? So the first step usually that we take in onboarding a supplier is to ask the suppliers for a quotation, okay? Whichever business models, whether it's so I will go back on that page right now. For whichever business model, whether it's for um, direct purchasing, GFC, API, or VMS, we have a quotation template in Excel that we send to the supplier or the brands or the distributors. They have to fulfill that quotation template with the different pricing, the, um, the, the MSRP as well, the uh, warehouse where the product are located at, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's quite a bit of information that the supplier needs to uh, fulfill, to fill in, in that Excel. Once we receive that Excel document, then we will evaluate the supplier's um, quotations. So if a supplier provides um, a quotation with 100 SPUs, then we will look at each SPU's uh, B2B uh, quote, and we will compare it with other suppliers B2B quote in order for us, of course, to make sure that we get a good competitive price, which I've put here in terms of direct purchasing, I've put that we need competitive wholesale price, right? But this is available for every single platforms, every single marketplace, or every single business model, that the, 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 the wholesale price must be competitive. Because what we do, since the supplier is on B2B model with us, then we will sell retail. So we make margin on the retail price versus the B2B wholesale price provided by the supplier. So the only reason why a supplier will be rejected is if the SPU's quotation are not competitive enough. Okay, okay. And we've got two more questions from Ken. One is, uh, with VMS API, does a merchant get a real-time dashboard to see sales? And maybe some other important metrics? Yes, that's, a good, that's another very good question, which is that the supplier will get to see um, the uh, report on a monthly basis by the TKOF team uh, of the different sales and the returns, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but uh, the dashboard, because this is a wholesale business model, Therefore, the dashboard is not shared with the supplier because we're the ones who sell retail. The supplier will get, of course, the logistics report, the returns report, et cetera, but they will not have access to the sales report that we get uh, internally uh, as TKOF team. That's valid for all the business models. The only, okay, the only business solution that offers a dashboard in Tmall Global is if you open a Tmall Global flagship store, in which case, because you are the brand selling directly to the consumer using our marketplace, therefore you will have access to a full dashboard with you know, the sales that you've made on a monthly basis, your cus uh, customer profiles, the different channels that you've used, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, okay, thank you, Dan. And uh, another one, can a merchant divert inventory 
from their existing TMG bonded warehouse to TQF using API VMS? That's another very good question. And the answer is no, because the TMG bonded warehouse is located in China. And TKOF is a cross-border business model, which like it says in its name, it's overseas fulfillment. So that means that the SKUs need to be overseas already before uh, reaching to the Chinese consumer doorstep. So of course it would have made it easier to divert the um, SKUs from a bonded warehouse to the Chinese consumer. But unfortunately that's not called overseas fulfillment. Uh, even though it's bonded warehouse, it's still not overseas fulfillment. So we will only fulfill SKUs from our overseas warehouses, which I've put here. So we have Germany, France, Netherlands, United Kingdom, and Hong Kong, which are considered overseas uh, locations that can help us to fulfill the Chinese consumers' um, uh, demands and purchases. Okay, thank you. And I think maybe the last one from Akash on YouTube, is it possible to send from India? Of course it is. So. Um, you can ship from India to one of those designated warehouses, right? Um, and that's possible. There's no problem for this. Um, it, I think the best warehouse that will be chosen for India might be, um, it might be Hong Kong, but I need to confirm that. Um, but it's, it's definitely possible. And I encourage any, um, any participant in the webinar today to go to the bit.ly uh, link that was shared by Kostya to then go to uh, our channel and then submit your documents so that we can contact you and evaluate further the opportunities. Okay. Thank you, Dean. I think it's all that we got. Thank you very much for joining us and sharing everything. That was really, really nice. Thank you once again. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Thank and you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. So uh, yeah, and uh, again, if you think TOF is something that's suitable for your business, then please go to the link and uh, contact Dean directly. Okay. And uh, uh, the last reminder is uh, uh, next, next you say is uh, going to be a public holiday in Hong Kong. So we will be no webinars. Okay. So yeah, next you say no color webinar. Okay and uh, see you uh, the second next week, Tuesday, 5 p.m. China High. Yeah, Thank you very much. Super last thing that for everybody who watched this webinar, I uh, will share uh, the information that was presented with all the steps, how you can join TQF and everything, and we'll see the record in terms you want to rewatch some details. So yeah, don't worry, you'll get everything. And thank you, Dean. Have a, have a, have a good day for everybody. My pleasure. Take see care, you. guys.